The diagram below represents some parts of the male reproductive system. Okay, and let's just zip this down a bit. And what do we have here? Rule number one, always write in your label. So, this here is the epididymis. <laughs> it's actually a very sweet name, but the epididymis. And this here is the scrotum. And this one is one testis. Okay? If there are more, if there's two, then we say they are the testes. So then it's the plural. But when you're talking about only one, it's the testis. Okay. Now, what do the testes do? Testes are responsible for producing what? Come on, come on. What do men produce? What gives you your secondary characteristics? Testosterone. All right, so testosterone, that's number one. Number two, the testes are responsible for producing the little spermies. Now, when there are lots of sperm cells together, we call them sperm. But when you talk about just one, then it is a sperm cell. So make sure you use the right terms. Okay, now, we have the vas deferens, all right? And this little guy's job is this pipe that goes all the way up here. All right, so let me just... There's this little pipe. And the vas deferens joins just below, after the bladder. Okay, it joins the urethra just after the bladder. And its job is to carry the little sperm cells from the epididymis here. So from the epididymis, which is where the little sperm spermatozoids mature. And when they are now mature, they mature here in this area. And when they're now ready and the male ejaculates, they travel all the way up the vas deferens and out through the urethra. So the vas deferens connects the epididymis to the urethra. All right. And the scrotum, what's the scrotum's job? The scrotum is, the, it, it's a sac. And what it does is it makes sure that those testes stay at about 37 degree, I mean 35 degrees Celsius. Now remember, your body temperature is about 37, 37,5, sometimes 38, when it's a really hot day. And what happens? The scrotum sags away from the body so that the testicles can cool down. Why? Because, I'm going to write here, 35 degrees Celsius is the optimum temperature for sperm production. So when you have very hot times, and my goodness, those poor little sperms are like not cooling down, or the testes aren't, then you know what? You're not going to produce proper sperm. Okay, so it says identify parts A, B, and C. So let's just quickly check what they were. I can't remember. You know, this is what happens when we have old age. I'm not going to write them out here. But there, A is the testis, it's one. B is the ep. P D D Miss, all right, and C is the scrotum. Okay, then describe the process of spermatogenesis. People start with the the the, the hormone. So we have testosterone does what? Testosterone stimulates the dip. Lloyd, because remember what happens in spermatogenesis, that is meiosis actually, you're going from 2N and you're reducing to 1N so that when we have the little egg cells in, we end up with a diploid zygote. So, testosterone stimulates the diploid germinal epithelial Cells lining what? They line the lining the seminiferous. Wow, what a word! Seminiferous tubules. Blah, 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 tubules in the testis. One testicle. So testis. All right, and then 
What does it do? To undergo meiosis to produce haploid sperm cells. And there we have our little haploid sperm cells, which is what we wanted in the first place. Remember that your seminiferous tubules is what the testes are made of. That th there are hundreds of meters of coiled little seminiferous tubules, and lining those tubules is the germinal epithelial, which has the diploid cells. And it's the testosterone that makes that germinal epithelium in the seminiferous tubules of the testis undergo meiosis, okay, and produce haploid, so from diploid to haploid little sperm cells. Okay, you must know this. People, they're going to ask you either spermatogenesis, how are sperm made, or oogenesis, how are eggs made. You must learn both, and I know we've covered both. I have, anyway. All right, now, let's see here. Um, test results show that a man has a low sperm count. Explain why a doctor would advise the man to wear underwear that is not tight. Guys, you mustn't wear tight underwear. It is bad for you, okay? Bad, 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 bad. All right, why? Because better or optimal, better sperm production Okay, because, so when you wear loose underwear, because the scrotum can move the testes, both of them, away from the body, um, and body to maintain or keep, maintain a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius because this is the temperature that little sperm cells are produced at and all right if it if it's looser if that underwear is loose and not very tight there's going to be less pressure on testes and better blood flow, okay, or blood supply. Now, use your common sense. If these little testes are all squished up in tight pants and tight underwear, I mean, well, first of all, they're going to be the same temperature as your body, so the sperm are not going to like being produced at that. They must be 35 degrees Celsius for optimum uh, uh, um, temperature for the testes to produce the little healthy sperm cells. And they need oxygen and they need nutrients, those germinal epithelial cells. Now, if they're all squished up, I mean, people, just use your common sense. Alrighty, we're almost finished with this question. We're going to need another minute or two. Here we go. Explain two ways in which sperm cells are adapted for effective movement towards the fallopian tubes. Okay, first of all, in the neck region, what do we have? We have mitochondria. And what do mitochondria do? They produce energy for motility. And where do they get the glucose or fructose from? From the seminal fluid, from the seminal uh, um, vesicles, which secrete an alkaline fluid that has fructose in it. So that's what the mitochondria do. But just remember, when the um, little sperm cell gets to the egg, the egg cell or the ovum, and the acrosome on the front of the sperm cell has the enzymes that, that penetrate the little egg. It goes, only the head part goes in that contains the nucleus. So the mitochondria stay behind. And that is why we never have the male mitochondrial DNA in a organism offspring. Okay. Why? Because they stay here. They don't go into the little egg cell. Then, second thing is the tail. So what does the tail do? It propels the sperm cell forward. 
Okay, it swims uh, forward. It propels the little sperm cell so it uses its tail to swim. And then people, remember the shape. I mean, it looks like this. And you've got the little neck region, then you've got the little tail, okay? And you've got the acrosome in the front here. It's a very nice stream line shape. Ah, shape. Okay, so therefore we have reduced friction. So I've given you three, you only needed two. Okay, just about this acrosome. As I said just now, it releases enzymes which penetrate the egg cell so that that little sperm, that little head with the haploid nucleus can go and we can have fertilization. Alrighty, last question. During a vasectomy, mm, the vas difference is in both testes are cut. Explain one reason why a man who uh, uh, does not want children may choose to have a vasectomy. Now let's go back to our diagram. Okay, what do we have here? Here's the vas difference. And I said to you, it links the epididymis with the urethra. Now imagine this is a highway. It's the main highway in your city or town. And if that highway is blocked and you cut that for highway or you put uh, um, uh, cement blocks here in that highway, the cars can't get through. The cars are going to have to stay here. And that's exactly what happens. Here, the little sperm cells are then reabsorbed. Okay. They can't get past here. So what does that mean? It means that here... Um, uh, no sperm cells. Okay. Um, in semen. Therefore, no fertilization can occur. All right. Then our very last question. Um, or the man has had a vasectomy is still capable of ejaculation. Okay. Listen carefully now, people. We have that semen is made up of little sperm cells, but it's also, also consists of the fluid part of it is from the seminal vesicles, which secretes an alkali fluid with um, fructose, which helps that which the mitochondria will use for the little guy to swim, number one. Then, number two, you have the prostate gland, and that secretes an alkaline fluid to neutralize the female's vagina. Okay, so that it doesn't kill the little sperm. You want that, that, that an alkali pH. Then, third one is the, the cowper's gland, which secretes an alkaline fluid, which goes through the urethra and neutralizes any a, a residue of urine in the urethra. Because remember, the sperm cells come out through the urethra so that you don't sit with, with the poor little sperm cells dead before they even get to the egg cell. You're supposed to be fertilizing, and that's what it's all about. All right, so that's the end of that question.